Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Gaming Telecom video, we're going to be discussing a couple of news stories which, as usual, have popped up over the past 24 or so hours. The first of which is an Intel 7960X Geekbench free result, and then we're going to finish the video with perhaps the more interesting for many of you, and that is RX Vega 56 slash 64, because some game benchmarks have actually leaked onto the internet. Well, more specifically one benchmark, but it apparently is for a whole slew, a whole suite of games, and it's an accumulated result, and it's quite nice because we actually have this against the 1070, the 1080, and so on and so on, so we'll go into that in a moment. But first things first, the 7960X. For those who don't know, I'm pretty sure most of you do, it is of course a 16 core 32 thread processor and is almost the pinnacle of the Skylake X lineup. Now this processor was overclocked to 58, uh, sorry, to 5450 megahertz and we have two distinct entries on the Geekbench uh, free um, database. The first is providing a single core score of 5804, the second is a multi-core score of 78323, 78, and we also have a second entry which popped up just a single day later. Now these results are a little higher, the single core score is 5882, but the multi-core score is insane, it's 81,005. Obviously these results are going to be very skewed in the favour of the 7960X because, well, it's overclocked to well over 5 GHz, so that's obviously something to take into consideration. But, even so, we can at least have an idea of what the scaling is going to be, and we can also take a look at the, at the 1950X, excuse me, which there are multiple entries, once again, for Geekbench 3 with this particular processor. It looks like, uh, and this is obviously a very casual glance because we don't have enough results yet, but it does look like this processor scales very well, perhaps slightly better, especially in single core, but... Given that you're going to be looking at ooh, around 700 US dollars as a premium for the 7960X, one can make a very compelling argument that it's probably not for everyone this small bit of performance um, jump. And don't forget that just a while ago there were leaked results of Ryzen 1950X actually running at 4.1 uh, gigahertz with the single core score of around 5450. Multi core score was. 58,400 essentially, so it does provide a very good indicator that, at least in terms of process of value, AMD is certainly on top, but as I discussed with the um, Fred Ripper 1950X just a few days ago, Intel do have some advantages with single core performance, single thread performance, but overall, at least in terms of sheer value, especially when it comes to multitasking, AMD are really on top of the game. Next up, we're going to talk about probably the subject many of you are interested in, and those are leaked performance results of RX Vega 56 and 64. These co come to us through Chip Hell Forum, uh, and I found them via Reddit slash R slash AMD. So, just for your FYI. A couple of things before we jump into this. One, I obviously can't um, speak about the validity of these results. Two, um, well... They're all pegged to a GTX 1080. So the auto result is obviously the card just basically managing its own clock speed. So it's boosting and whatever else by itself and setting its own default power states and all that stuff. Whereas overclocking is obviously, well, them overclocking. Unfortunately, as you can probably guess, I don't know what clock speeds they're getting for the 1080 or, more importantly, the Vegas. I mean, we can probably guess what the 1080 is managing to achieve, but what the Vega 64 and 56 are getting your guess is as good as mine. The third thing is we don't know what games are being tested because this is like a cumulative result, I'm assuming. I don't think they would just use this for like 3D Mark or whatever. I would assume they would just say clearly 3D Mark. So it looks like these are an overall, they've taken a bunch of games and just basically digested them down to a, to one chart. So what games those are, I don't know. It could be a bunch of games which heavily favor AMD. It could be a mixture, in other words, it favors AMD and NVIDIA. Or it could be an NVIDIA favor. Uh, favoured test, in which case that speaks volumes for AMD, and finally, well, yeah, uh, obviously we don't know other details of the test as well, such as uh, 
driver revisions and stuff like that. But I'm going to assume they were testing Vega with the latest drivers that are available for reviewers. Anywho, uh, let's talk about this. I'm going to focus f first of all on auto, in other words, the default clock speeds and all of that. Um, once again, the 1080 is 100%, so it's the reference. RX Vega 56 is 90%. That's pretty impressive. The problem is the Vega 64s are about 3% faster than the 1080. And considering the price difference, it's not awful because obviously when you start getting into like higher end priced GPUs, the value versus performance thing does kind of start dropping. But here's the big issue I've got with that, and that's overclocking. So if you overclock the 56, it basically jumps about 17% in performance. Once again, pegging it to the 1080 as the reference. So it goes from 90% to 107%, which is very impressive. It essentially means it's 7% faster. Obviously, it does depend on the game, I'm assuming, but on average, it appears to be 7% faster than the GTX 1080. Compare that to the Vega 64 Air. That offers 118% so that's around 18% faster than a reference design GTX 1080, which means that if you're overclocking the 1080, it's faster than a Vega 56. If you're overclocking um, a 1080 versus the Vega 64 Air, there's around 5% difference in performance, which is not bad, actually, for AMD. So what about pricing? Well, here's where it gets a bit trickier. Obviously, it does depend on the retailer, so your mileage may vary. However, a very quick uh, check on Amazon. Uh, I'm going to use the US because, well, it's just easier given that RX Vega prices are released in dollars. So we're looking at the 64 Vega at 500 US dollars. Compare that to like a basic gigabyte GTX um, model. And this sucker is 500 US dollars. You can get a couple of other GTX 10, I'm sorry, yeah, GTX 1080s at around the 500 to low 500 dollar pricing. So the reason I bring that up is really it comes down to how many cards are going to be available with no price gouging, and second of all, um, how ready and steady the stream of 1080s are. One problem a lot of folks are having, especially with the 1070, not the 1080s, but the 1070, is mining is really affecting the card's price. Obviously, your mileage will vary, and it does depend upon the particular vendor you're going for, but it's not always a $100 price difference between the 1070 and the 1080. In fact, they're getting closer to launch prices, which is kind of a shame. And I can understand many people just saying, screw it, I'm just going to go with the 1080 over the 1070. So, what's my thoughts on this? Well, obviously we need to know more results, and we all know that the benchmarks are going to be live tomorrow. The concerns, and just to reiterate what I said a few days ago, the concern I have is that the 56 is the card that AMD have asked reviewers to prioritise, and two issues. One, that was supposedly late during the review process. And two, the 56 isn't going to be out for two weeks. So it sounds to me like they've got more confidence in the performance and value of the 56 over the 64. Therefore, for people who want to buy the 64, which basically goes on sale at the same time as reviews are available, I would... I wouldn't say caution you, but I would consider, anyway, waiting just just a few days for more benchmarks to go online or perhaps for more um, for a greater suite of games to be tested. But obviously that is down to you. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.